I think we've had our fill of carrots for now. Let's move on to other necessities, shall we? Our clothing production is sure to impress this way. I love that the Charlians have been dedicating their whole life, their whole life, everything about it to this. And these fucking low prints are just... <laughs> just fucking everything up. It's so good. <laughs> the Charlians are like, we've been communicating with something beyond the stars. We must preserve Eosia. Meanwhile, the bunnies are like, mm, fuck all your shit, let's have some carrots. Here we are, the apparel production station. We've chosen to employ through more traditional methods the task, creation magics. Hydaelyn, in her infinite wisdom, blesses with the self-same affinity for her magic, for the magic her people possessed. We have other amazing talents, of course. I know you're dying to hear about them, but I'll regale you with the details another time. That said, we did run into a spot of trouble at first. Our magic alone was not sufficient to see the work done. In the end, we discovered crystallized aether was a wonderful catalyst that could provide us with extra beasts we needed. My, how resourceful. At the sweet sound of recognition, you will also be impressed to hear we've read all about your habit of changing attire to match your chosen profession. For the sake of efficiency, I presume, this has also been taken into account with our designs. But why take the word for it when you can simply try on the clothes? Make yourself known to the workers and they'll see the rest. Oh no, love print fashion? Oh no. Oh no. Ah, uh, this is you! One of the visitors from Etheris! Goodness me, mapping way wasn't kidding! You really are smaller than the Watcher! Oh, right, you're here to try on a set of clothes, yes? What would you be fashion for you today? An outfit that embodies my bloodlust. Oh. Um. <laughs> Here it is. So we have a couple of thumbnails where I'm pretty much wearing the same thing. Look at this. Look at this old ass video. This is my first ever Final Fantasy video. And I'm basically wearing this. This is ridiculous. And then we have another one with a little bit of a fancier one. Just pondering my orb. Remember that meme? Jesus. There we are, all finished. A perfect fit if I do say so myself. I'd be lying if I said I understand what bloodlust is, but I assume it's something you enjoy. I'm certain the clothes are very flexible, yet sturdy enough to endure uh, whatever it is you plan on doing while wearing them. Stalling way? Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Would you look at that? Speechless! And here I thought you may not like it. If you've a mind to try something else, why not speak with my fellow assistants? I'm sure they'd be happy to oblige. You must continue wearing those garments in order to progress? <laughs> no! More like distracting way? Never. Wouldn't be me. Should I got Pokemon Violet? Oh, hell yeah! How's it been going? My wife has been obsessed is um, not sufficient to describe. Let me, so let me put it this way, chat. Amanda was level 55 with most of her Pokemon before she beat the second gym. Her ADD brain. I literally saw her do this. I saw her do this. She walked to a Pokemon Center, right? To heal her Pokemon, which were almost all dead. And she pulled right up to it, saw a, a, one of the, the shiny raids, whatever they're called, like to get the, the terrestrializing. And she veered away from there before healing and ran straight to it. And literally said, ooh, a shiny. She said it. She said, ooh, a shiny out loud. <laughs> Uh, no one said you'd be coming. Uh, how can I help you? You wish to try my clothes? Really? Uh, of, of course, it would be my honor. <laughs> Do you have anything in mind? I think with a little more um, flair to it, little little sexier. I um, I, I think I can handle that. Let's see. This should do. All right, what's the drip? What's the drip? Drip check. Shh. 
Shoosh! That drip though! That drip though! Shoosh! <laughs> that shit busting for real, for real. <laughs> Am I sufficiently zoomer yet, chat? Some of my best work yet. <laughs> Times and tastes truly have changed. It used to be so rare for anyone to dress clothing with a focus on form over function. Thankfully, I had a spare concept of robes made using a different fabric, and I think it looks rather fletching. Fetching? I was worried how the cons concept would turn out when I put the proof, but it was like stunning on you. Why would you come and show Living Way? I'm sure she's eager to see what you've come up with. I love it says you must continue wearing it. You have to. <laughs> you have no choice. I've been playing for a little over a year now. My wife got me into it. And I've been hyper fixated ever since. Same. Same. Actually, we've been playing for much the same amount of time. I started last November. Um, that's super cute that your wife got you into it. Uh, I told the story before, but uh, one of my good friends, Farnsey, he was streaming Final Fantasy XIV just doing botanist stuff. Like, not even anything, like, not any extremes, not any raids, not any story content. And just watching him do the botanist work, I was like, I need to play this game. And if I didn't tune into that one stream, I probably would have never started streaming Final Fantasy XIV. And then you wouldn't be here, because I'd be streaming something stupid instead. <laughs> Name Sprout Glam. Sprout Chic. My, don't we look splendid? The results are much trial and error, but I know quality work when I see it. You needn't speak. I can see your adoration for the moon and we low prites in your eyes. Low prites, no doubt your friends were the same having sampled our creations. I need to see. I need it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you, you remember remember when chat was a ladies man but chat remember when thank was a ladies man chat <laughs> i guess this is why he dripped out to the max i'll use the cane right now <laughs> this is thank <Thancred. laughs> sorry to have kept you waiting they insisted we sample all of the concepts they were returned verily tis an ensemble most becoming Damn, Rianje, look at him showing off. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> he does like it. I think it's past time we return to these clothes. <laughs> oh my god. I was so confident our garments would meet your approval. Whatever did we do wrong? The Watcher taught us, in his time, everyone wore the same robes. To do otherwise was against social etiquette. He thought we appealed to modern taste by tailoring these robes to specific professions, but... <laughs> well, what profession was Thangrid's for? Was it actually Pimp? Please, you mustn't be so hard on yourself. Should we resort to evacuating the people of Theris, they will most certainly have need of your attire. It is clear you spared no effort in addressing our needs, but you must understand that we're not quite so... homogenous. Speaking for myself, what I wear now better suits my taste, even if it is of inferior make. But there are others whose choices may be influenced by traditions or personal experience. Rather than make assumptions for the whole, you must consider the individual and their potential preferences. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because they did say that all the different races, religions, creeds, like all that stuff was caused by the Sundering. Because everyone used to be the same. So that makes sense. I fear we underestimated the complexity and diversity of your people. Even if we memorize every tone we received, I doubt we'd have fared much better. Maybe we're doing you a disservice trying to shower you with our baubles and flip frippery, thinking it was all to your benefit when you'd be better off on your own. There are some who might agree. People who prefer to keep others at arm's length, even when they know they shouldn't. As one such former fool, I'd like to ask you a question. 
This plan to evacuate and escape the final days, did it account for the reflections of, of the source as well? Interesting. Um, not that I'm aware of. We were born of Hydaelyn's love for Aetheris, and the salvation of the people in the star, and that star alone, has ever been our aim. Surely it's best to dev devote ourselves to saving one world than to divide our efforts as cross 14 and risk failing them all. But my daughter's over there. I suppose you're right. Living way, might we have leave to explore Bestway's burrow unattended? You've given us much to think about. I certainly. Until later, then. If I may, I'd like to accompany thee a while longer. Really? I, I mean, you're more than welcome to. There's actually something I wish to speak with you about. Let's be off, then, shall we? My apologies, I wasn't trying to spy or anything. Uh, everyone's been talking about the visitors who came from Aetheris, and I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. I was excited at first, but now I'm worried. What if the people of Aetheris refuse to come? What if we can't save them? Oh, it's clearly made a mess of things. Oh, but, but wait, you still haven't visited the domiciles. Once you see them, you'll understand how wonderful the moon truly is, I'm sure of it. I'll be waiting for you at the teleporter near the entrance. Oh, uh, and the name's Growing Way, by the way. See you soon. I like you. Damn, I like you. What's your name? I was about to go into a full-on quote from Shrek. You are welcome. Um, I watched Shrek so much as a child growing up that I had almost the whole memory, whole movie memorized. And I would just constantly, constantly talk through the movie and just quote it along with it. So I almost went into the, the whole tirade from the beginning. You are lucky. You're here. You're really here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, or, um, sorry. What should I call you? Kaleo Ashstorm, eh? Crikey, even your names are amazing. Well, Tlail will be using the teleporter to enter the residential area whenever you're ready. Watch five minutes if Bridgertron and had to stop ready because of Gay of Enemies. I was expecting all their voices to be cute and high like this. I was not expecting that. I was I got like side <laughs> side blind there. It doesn't teleport where you want me to go, so it just randomly teleports me? <laughs> oh, I'm just up top. Okay. A private audience, as thou didst request. For reasons I know not. Mother... Buckin... Orion J... The secret boy always got his secrets. Horny little secret man always wants his mm, secrets. He likes to take them and hide them and keep them. Fuck your oh, Riyanche. A private audience, as thou did request. Just a precaution. I'd rather I didn't have to ask the question at all, but I take my responsibilities very, very seriously. But on that, holding on to that one for how you, Talel, I have made no secret of my disdain for Orianjay's secret keeping. <laughs> Orianjay likes to keep secrets and likes to keep them in his little pocket and keep them stored for later. And it's not even like big secrets sometimes. It's like 
someone will ask some questions like, oh, verily, I will explain, but not now. We'll have to wait until later. <laughs> I, I think it was Reen was the last one that I really got. She was like, oh, thank her. Can you explain this thing? I will, but not now. Do you and your friends by any chance find our accommodation wanting? Ooh. Be honest, brutally even. Ooh, no. It would be ungracious of me to belittle the efforts of thee and thine. Lovely sentiment, really. But the disappointment is writ plain on your comrades' faces. It's all the more frustrating since no one will come out and say what they find wanting. If there are faults in our work, we need to know. We can, we will do better. But time is not on our side. The final days will wait for no one. If your people are to be saved, we must take quick and decisive action. This vessel must serve as a home for as many passengers as possible for far longer than we may like. Which brings me to my request. Our collaborators on Atheris are doing what they can to prepare for the voyage. Would you be willing to go and lend them a hand? And ship it to Lulu? Hey, if anyone wants to ever clip anything and send it to Lulu, please do. Because Lulu gives people exposure, and I would love to keep growing. Having seen the moon for yourself, you could speak to its many splendors, learn what else they might require, and assuage whatever concerns they have. Wherefore wouldst thou entrust me with such a task? How to put it? You're the only one who appears not to be wholly unsatisfied with our work. Or quite good at pretending that's the case, at least. Calm, collected, tactful to a fault. Very particular with your words, too. You understand that, in the face of great danger, one cannot pursue perfection at the expense of practicality. The difficult choices must often be made for the greater good. Got to the heart of Ariandre right there. And so fate doth conspire to set my feet upon this path once more. Nope, I'm right here. I'm locking eyes. <laughs> I need, need Ariandre to look over and lock eyes with me. I'm like, secrets. Ah, idle musings. Tis no trifle thou dost ask, yet full well do I understand the urgency and necessity. I... Oh, dear me! Dear me! I was terribly sorry for the mix-up! <laughs> it's a bit of a malfunction. I hadn't realized the residential quarters were inaccessible, you see. Little, the cartoon <laughs> tire squeal sound effect. <laughs> like, I want to believe that's canon, that they were designed by Heidelin to have that little cartoony screech. <laughs> like, it's not just added for the player's benefit, it's actually in the real world. <laughs> oh. But you're still in one piece. So, all's well that ends well, yes? Uh, won't happen again. I promise. <laughs> oh, I thought they were gonna be like they're gonna be like. Hmm? Don't drop a piano on the bunny's heads, Faye. <laughs> we're doing Who Framed Roger Rabbit over here? Heidelin's mint flippers. <laughs> one second. One second. Island's mint flavored. How oh, feels to chew five gum? 
<laughs> Did everyone else have those five gum commercials? Those absolutely were the funniest things ever. How it feels to chew five gum. It may not seem like it, but we've been planning this for far longer than I care to admit. Each time we woke up, we had long discussions about how to save as many of you as we can. It felt like everyone had an opinion on this or that. But the one thing we agreed upon was that the people of Theris wouldn't take action to save themselves until it was far too late. That's why we're striving to make the moon a vibrant, magical place they'd hop at the chance to visit, rather than waiting for the flames of oblivion to get them off their tails and force them to accept our invitation. Bong to Leo spoilers? Did I miss- oh, did I miss a spoiler? No way. No way, really? <laughs> Wait a minute, did I click over there, see the Heidelin meme that I wanted to point out, and miss a spoiler on the page? <gasps> Good, you're here. Through this door is the greatest air- Ends Vale. It was named as such because it's the veil to end all veils, the most beautiful forest you'll ever see. We understand your people of Ethereus enjoy taking leisurely walks through natural spaces and the like, so I'm sure you'll enjoy it. How about we start a nice stroll through the fountain? This way. You're being a spot of three. <laughs> Ooh. Pain is friends up in the wall. <laughs> Need streamer safe mode. <laughs> Chat, come on, come on! I almost get spoiled one time. Wait, why? Are, wait, are these all fake trees? Are they all fake? <laughs> They're all fake. <laughs> so, what do you think of the forest? Isn't it positively pleasant? Simply sublime? I couldn't see the forest or the trees, like, couldn't see the forest for the trees. I get it. I didn't see any- wait, you don't mean the crystals out there. Right you are! Our forest is made of crystals and constructs, dotting the landscape as far as the eye can see. Building this place was a challenge, let me tell you. Since we were born here, we've never seen trees in person, let alone a The information sent by our collaborator is quite enlightening, but after much deliberation, we decided to use crystalline constructs in place of living trees. And thanks to our atmospheric circulation system, this place produces air as clean as you find on any forest. Man, how could they... How could they not... Like, everything wrong? Everything is wrong! <laughs> Why not option three? Because the second one was more funny. The fountain here is behind us, powered by the rather large crystal adorning its top, it plays a vital role in supplying us with fresh water. Much time and effort was spent making it the most spherical of spheres, and I dare say the unparalleled roundness speaks for itself. Orb. Chat, can I get an orb? Wild wife spotted? Australian wife? You've been seen. <laughs> Wife reveal? Oh, did you see her face? Or... Oh no, did you see her face? A monkey. I enjoy nothing more than a nice long stretch and a spot of relaxation whenever I come up here. You look, you can use a stretch yourself. Nice big stretchy. A little Nagas her arm? Okay. That's the spirit. I feel more relaxed simply watching you. A sight worth many years spent building this place. It's not much to ask. It's always been a dream of mine to take a walk through the forest with someone from Ethereus. Could we... maybe... maybe... Ooh. You saw hair? Hair reveal. <gasps> you will? Oh, be, be so my quivering whiskers. Yep. Don't you say you. Don't say you. Look, contact. It's just because it's the word quivering. Yes. Stop. Okay, apparently you not only have to warn chat not to be horny on a main, but my wife as well. You just hear the word quivering and you're like, yeah, grass. 
Just had a long, boring day at work? Well, you're home now. You just spend some time with your dad. She's right, though. <laughs> I was thinking, Tlail, that I could be more helpful to you by teaching you a little about the moon. And what it is we do? When we were first created, the moon's sole purpose was to hold Zodiac, and there was absolutely nothing to be found here. Eventually, Heidelin gave us our first task. Furnish the moon with propulsion systems capable of facilitating travel to other stars. It sounds impressive, and I suppose in some respects it is, but it was only possible thanks to all the knowledge Heidelin shared with us. We also had a lot of time to get it done. Six thousand years, give or take. A thousand years will give you such a crick in the neck. Ask me to taste the rainbow crystal. What? What? No, no. I'm not sure what it is you do with crystals on Theris, but we, we, we don't eat them. And certainly not this one. It's possessed of all six elements, wind, lightning, fire, earth, ice, and water, and heart, and we are Captain Planet. We use crystals like these to maintain the moon's elemental equilibrium. It's worth mentioning, though, that because of Hydaelyn's influence, being the embodiment of tranquility and stasis but in all, manipulating the elements here is different than it might be on the Theris. And conjuring a fire would sooner dry your clothes than singe them, for example. Put simply, the etheric conditions are ill-suited to growth, which is why the surface is mostly barren. Of course, this was all necessary to keep the raging energies of Zodiac in check. Boo. You're, you are at your last aura. Ramley globs everyone and boops all their snoots. Please, don't, don't bring me back to Tumblr. Don't bring me back to Tumblr. <laughs> this may come as a surprise, but we didn't begin building the habitable areas until after the propulsion systems were ready. Considering how long it took, I wish we started sooner. Who would have thought we needed 4,000 years to make all of this? It certainly wasn't worth work your... Well, it's really... So there wasn't work you dare rush either. We had to create infrastructure and countless supporting systems, some of which wouldn't be operational hundreds of years later. And then there was a brief period where our productivity came to a screeching halt when the bizarre red satellite was sent up from a, a Theris, the Allegan's mischief, I think. Why don't I know about this? I probably learned about this, but I don't remember it. Chat, can you give me a refresher? What's taint is precious? Potatoes, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Oh, wait, wait a minute. But isn't the ship here? Cause I, I know, I know Dalamud fell. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm completely misunderstanding. There was like, it looked like a crashed ship on the moon. So I thought that's what they were talking about. Dalamud came up, gotcha. My brain just didn't quite follow what they were saying. You thought maybe some new nefarious actor was colluding with Zodiac. All we could do was stand by and brace ourselves for the worst. Can't tell you how relieved we were when Highland informed us of its destruction. Oh, yes, there was much joyous humming that day. I would also like to be joyously humming. Then that took them 6,000 years to make the engine, another 4,000 to do the living areas. Didn't do very well. <laughs> that's that's no moon. <laughs> Nerd alert! Hey, do you notice anything particular about the treetops? I mean, apart from the fact that they're massive crystals and not trees. Uh. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It's the golden rings emanating from the glowing spheres. Along with the device fixed near the ceiling, they fulfill a role similar to our sun and do so even better. The sun and similar celestial objects in the Great Expanse radiate energy that is harmful to your bodies. These rings shield you from the energy while allowing you to bathe in the perfect amount of sunlight, or rather, a close approximation of it. Pretty impressive, wouldn't you say? Oh, and if you look closely, you'll see different types of trees have ever so slightly different curvature. Yes, indeed, the forest is truly the greatest. Curvature, you say? Damn, tree, I like your curves. There was something else I wanted to tell you about. Uh, oh, right. The propulsion system and habitat features were completed around 2,000 years ago, and with that, the most important features were fit for purpose. We saw well and good, except we still knew absolutely nothing about the present-day people of Etheris. Why not go and visit Etheris yourself, you might ask? Strictly forbidden. Were our technology to, or knowledge of the moon's true purpose exploited for evil ends, the results could be disastrous. Then there were a few more rejoinings and became increasingly difficult to converse with Heidelin. 
Fearful we might lose the ability to communicate with her altogether, we beseeched her to find people in Atheris we could trust to help. Didn't help very much. They were pretty bad at it. Hey, pretty bad at it. <laughs> with the exception of our routine inspections and maintenance, we remained asleep and waited hopeful Hydlin would find someone who would help us. Eventually she did, and though her powers were, were waning, we were able to speak to them directly for a short while. We shared with them everything we could, including our knowledge of the heavens and a means to travel here to the moon. They certainly didn't waste any time, although we taught them. No more than a few years after that, our collaborators found a means to convey messages and supplies to us from down below. With all the letters, books, and other resources they sent, we learned enough to start making more meaningful changes to the moon. And now you're here, hopefully enjoying everything as much as I am. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I knew you would like greatest ever Emsvale. I knew it. Thank you again for coming here, by the way. I know it was just a walk through the forest, but it means a lot to me. There you are. I take it you already received the grand tour. A shame we missed it. Grow away, I've been looking all over for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Orianje, what's the secret? Oh, I, uh, is this about the teleport to the residential area? No, never mind that. We were pressing matters at hand. I'll be calling an emergency meeting shortly, and your attendance is required. Really? Can't imagine why you need me there, but if you insist. We won't be gone, we won't be late long, so you're all more than welcome to continue looking about the burrow. Now come along, growing way. They've spent 12,000 years preparing for this. With the appointed hour fast approaching, I can certainly understand their restlessness, but still. Nice to be seen that the people can be persuaded to evacuate when there are yet no signs of the final days. What's more, the technology of this place defies imagination. I doubt there are many who would readily come to terms with living in such surroundings. Forgive me, my friends, but I must beg your leave. There's another matter which yet begs for my attention. Of course. We can accompany you if you like. Nay, that will not be necessary. If you'll excuse me, I have secrets to keep. Do Dorianje seems strange to you? More so than usual, I mean. I know he has a, per a penchant for keeping his own counsel, but be lying if I said I wasn't worried. Will you go and see if he's all right? Tim, that's so sweet! Thank you for gifting out a sub to Red Mage! And oh my gosh, I forgot to thank you. MVP QB, thank you for following, and Zerasworth, thank you for following. I'm sorry I didn't thank you, MVP. I was busy eating a disgusting jelly bean. How are y'all both doing today? And Zerus, how'd you find the spot? Horny little secret man. <laughs> did anyone clip that? I hope they did. You still and I remain here and see what else we need to learn about the final days. If you hurry, perhaps you can catch up to him. Filthy little secret man with his dirty little secret hands. Am I actually gonna have a stealth mission, like sneaking behind him? Orianji ventures off to Mare Lamentorium for reasons unknown. You must tread carefully, else he makes sense. I cannot believe they implemented Assassin's Creed stealth missions into this game. I once told someone that the Ascians were actually Organization 13. Dude, Chris, I have made that joke so many times. I love it. I've called them discount organization members so many times. All right, stealth mission chat. Let's see if I can do it. My old Assassin's Creed video game days still lift, are still with me. Follow Orange at a safe distance. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I'll have the dog fly me over his head. That'll work. I got it memorized. Okay, Axel. I meant Lewin tells you to remember. True, true. Yeah, a hundred percent. Hmm. I don't think a cat boy be stalking me. You're gonna get me caught! Tor, you're gonna get me caught! Y'all are not hiding at all! Dude, 358 and a half days is one of my favorite Final Fantasies. It sucks that they've never ported it. All they did was they port the cutscenes. Because 358 and a half days has probably one of the best stories of all the Kingdom Hearts. And the gameplay is pretty good too. Oh shit, oh shit, I was reading chat, I was reading chat. 
Oh god. I thought he was gonna pause for longer. He's booking it! Look at him go! Happy feet! Wombo combo! Thou didst chance to overhear my conversation with Living Way, I presume? He noticed me. Senpai noticed me. It was not mine intent to move in shadow. Nevertheless, I have been asked to do that and more yet again. Is it so plain that these strangers could intuit it at a glance? My capacity for silence and secrecy? And duplicity. <laughs> well, you wear it like a badge of honor sometimes, Arianje. And Grahatia did contrive to deliver the first at the price of his own life. I was complicit in the scheme. A sacrifice averted for a mercy. Would that I could say the same for Minfilia. One life for one world. And by that bloody bargain brokered by my hand were the scions robbed of a dear comrade and Flamine, her beloved daughter. So, um, I'm calling out Ivy. Dan Varianji ain't good looking though. We got a horny in chat. Get the bonk emotes. Get the bonk emotes. <laughs> Which is me saying I'm distracting myself from the sadness of this scene. <laughs> Two souls whose selflessness was beyond measure, whose resolve was unshakable. They would not be moved even had I thought to protest. That protest I did not. Far from it. I pushed them forward. No effort did I make to seek out alternatives. Ones that would not demand such terrible costs. That resignation weighs heavy on my mind. As does the memory of another lost to mine inaction. Dearest Moonbrither, who did face death unflinching that we might secure a means to bring low the Asians. I will maintain this to the day I die. Moonbreda and Papa Limo were shafted. Those two had so much potential as characters. And they they got taken out of the story. It's it's just not fair. They had so much potential and they were never used. Like almost all of Papa Limo's character is only if you chose which one was it? Was it Gridania? I, I chose Ulda, so I never even got to really meet Papalimo. I had Lisa shafted too. I mean, Lisa had a whole expansion with Stormblood. I don't know if I agree. I think she shafted after that, and she's kind of fallen to the wayside. Although she did get some good screen time in M Walker so far. In her hour of need, I did not dutiful disciple of Louisois, ever looking to the greater good. Had I shut my eyes and bid her live instead, mayhap she would be with us today. Selfish wants born of everlasting regrets. Most days I put them from my mind but could think of naught else when asked to swallow the same bitter draught. Subterfuge and sacrifice. Mayhap the right moral choice, but one I regard with great trepidation. You know, it's so much nicer when I can make fun of characters, and then they have to go and turn the things I make fun of them for into sad stories. I like calling him a horny secret guy, He's so horny for secrets. I love it. But now, now I can't make fun of him for it. Or if I do, I'm being mean. God damn it. They keep taking things away from me. The calamity of Amorot was a tragedy beyond reckoning. One which must never again come to pass. must we struggle haunted by ghosts of those we have lost clinging to those we pray we can yet save 
Okay, Chris. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, clearly you have lost the most in this situation. Okay. <laughs> Don't have to come for my throne. <laughs> Don't be mean to the fancy speaking nerd. Come on. Come on. But what of those we cannot? How do we make peace with the dreadful algebra of necessity? The dreadful algebra of necessity. Yo, bro, same. Algebra is pretty dreadful. Have faith in yourself and your decisions. Take heart and protect well those you can. Sage counsel indeed. You're welcome. I am smart. I say good thing with mouth. I see. Wisdom as befits a great worm. Curious that he should think thee in need of such encouragement. Strange. Scarcely can I remember when last we spoke alone, and so candidly. You can never! <laughs> Is that a jab at the previous expansions? <laughs> I thank thee. For all my supposed skill with words, I find it difficult to express such private thoughts. As for the Loperitz proposition, I will take time and consider how to respond. Wait, he isn't even telling us what the secret is. Mutual benefit if we could converse more openly with our aspiring caretakers. A concern I should be glad to address on the science behalf. Wait, he's still being secret this man. Okay. Tense and bear one's heart to another is a frightening thing indeed. We cannot move forward ere we take that bold first step. A lesson I have learned many times before. And today. Oh, he isn't? Oh, I'm just jumping to it. Wabbits. Man, I love it. Oh, oh, that was, I thought it was more of a secret. Okay, I, I was thinking there's some grander plan. I didn't think it was just the working with the Charlian thing. No matter, we've got our plans. That evil smile. Opal, I didn't see you. How are you doing today, Opal? Sus bunny, <laughs> sussing way. Thanks for watching. It's so sad that I can't really make fun of Urian J anymore. He's too precious and too broken. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give a like and a subscribe because it really helps out. And also check out the Patreon down below. We have weekly community nights and shouts out at the end of the video. I would really like to do this full time. So any support helps. I'd like to thank John Best, Ro Ro Lai, Sven Fulger, Rosalia Streaming Network, and Kev was here. And as always, have a lovely day.